Did you know that the second bassoonist in an ensemble has one of the most important jobs in the entire woodwind section? Or did you know that there is a hierarchy of how communication should be run between a first and a second bassoonist within a larger ensemble? These are just a couple important pieces of information to know when it comes to whether you're playing first or second or third or fourth or contrabassoon and any type of ensemble. In this video, I'm going to be specifically looking at what is the difference between a first bassoonist's role in the ensemble, what is their role within the section and the ensemble, and the second bassoonist's role within the bassoon section in the greater ensemble, and some tips for how to be successful in both roles as a bassoonist. If this is the first time we're meeting, my name is Dr. Natalie Law, and I am a professional bassoonist and teacher, and I love to help people just like you learn how to play the bassoon, improve your skills, and just become confident playing this instrument. So if you're not already, make sure you're subscribed down to the channel, give me a thumbs up, and comment any questions that come up in your mind down in the comment section throughout the video. So let's first talk about some tips for playing first bassoon, and the first bassoonists role in an ensemble. If you are playing first bassoon, what is your job? Obviously you need to play your part and you need to play it to the best of your ability and you know do a good job in, in the playing aspect of things, but there's a lot more to it than just playing your part. As a first bassoonist in any principal position, first chair in any type of ensemble, whether it's an orchestra or a band or maybe even a larger chamber ensemble, it's a principal player's role to lead within their section. The first bassoonist's role is to be responsible for their the other bassoonists in their section and make sure that you are playing together, you're in tune, you're in time, you're creating a good cohesive bassoon section sound and you're leading the section. And so in more specific terms, what that means is that you are setting an example of how things should be played for the second bassoonist or the third bassoonist or so on. And when you are leading by example, you should be playing the music specifically how you think it should be played. And it's the jobs of your other section members to try and match you as best as possible. This can be anything from articulation, and dynamics to things as specific as what fingering you should use for a specific note. Really anything where there might be a question or slightly different way to do something, it's your role as the first bassoonist to make the decisions and lead by example. And that role means, you know, coming to rehearsal with your part prepared, knowing your music, you know, but not only knowing your part, but knowing how it fits within the ensemble, knowing, you know, how do the bassoons fit into this greater piece? You know, are the bassoons playing an important role? Um, or are we mostly just the background supportive role in this piece? Um, how does our part fit in with the larger ensemble? So I think for first bassoonists, it requires a little bit more preparation in terms of understanding how the part fits within the greater ensemble. Because any decisions that you make, whether it be about whether you should play something staccato versus legato or something piano or forte, any of those types of decisions, they should be informed decisions based on what else is going on in the ensemble. So you're leading by example, you're making decisions as you're playing, and you're trying to communicate as best as possible to your other section mates how things should be played, especially if you have passages that are, you're playing the same thing with, with the other bassoonists, which is frequently. In general, the goal should be that the sound, the bassoons, or any on, any section of the ensemble, but in our case, the bassoonists are sounding as cohesive and and playing together as much as possible. Another important role of the first bassoonist is in terms of communication within the ensemble. Obviously, when it comes to making decisions within the bassoon section, the person who makes the final decision on things is the first bassoonist. If there's a question of how short or how long to play something or how loud to play something or what style to play something in, that final decision should be made by the first bassoonist. And if there's ever any question within the bassoon section about how something should be played and the, the first bassoonist is not 
able to make that decision completely or is not totally sure how to approach something, it's the first bassoonist's job to communicate with other sections, other section members, and to communicate with the conductor to figure out the problem. So if the bassoons have a part that is played with, say, the flutes, then it is the first bassoonist's job if, if those two parts aren't lining up. And it can be hard because, you know, bassoonists are not often sitting super close to the flute players, depending on how big your ensemble is. And so it can be hard to hear across the ensemble. And so if something isn't lining up, then the, it's the first bassoonist's job to check with the first flute player and check on how can we play together better. Maybe someone's jumping the gun and coming in early, or um, maybe a rhythm isn't being played totally correctly, or maybe there's a discrepancy in the part itself that you need to check with the conductor to make sure what the correct part is. And any time that the conductor needs to be involved in a decision, it's the first bassoonist's job to initiate that contact with the conductor. Or if the conductor is wanting to pose a question to the bassoon section or fix something or, or change something about how we're playing it, it's the first bassoonist's job to, con to connect with the, the conductor. The conductor will usually speak directly to the first bassoonist. One of the reasons that the first bassoonist is responsible for initiating conversation on behalf of the bassoon section is just for efficiency. You know, if there are 60 people in an ensemble and everybody is, you know, sort of allowed to or, or speaking, you know, asking questions to the conductor or trying to talk across the ensemble, a rehearsal can get really inefficient that way. And so that's why if anybody within their section has a question, they should direct it towards the, the principal player or the first chair, first bassoonist in our case, and then that player has to decide, do I need to talk to another section member? Should I talk to the conductor? Can I just make the decision? And ultimately, it, it makes rehearsal a lot more efficient when there's fewer people that are sort of leading the discussion and needing to make the final decision. Because you may run into a situation where there may be a large disagreement between a first bassoonist and a second bassoonist. And ultimately, even if both players have totally different views on how to play something, it's ultimately the first bassoonist's decision and the second player has to go along with it. Now, in some ensembles, the conductor is a little bit more informal and there's not really an environment of where only the principal players speak. It doesn't necessarily mean that no one but the principal players can speak, but it just means that if you're playing anything other than first bassoon, you should direct all of your questions, comments, concerns to your principal player first before going to the conductor, or before going to a different player in a different section. So it just sort of makes rehearsal more efficient. You know, as a first bassoonist, if you take the lead and make any decisions that need to be made, it is your job as a first bassoonist that if you notice someone in your section that's not playing something correctly, maybe they are playing a rhythm incorrectly or they're playing a dynamic differently than you, maybe you want to play something piano or very soft and they're playing louder than you, and it happens more than once or twice, then you might want to take some time on a rehearsal break um, or whenever there's a moment to, to let them know, hey, like I want us to play softer here, or hey, I'm, I'm not sure that you're playing this rhythm correctly, can we double check that you have the same thing as me? Because it, there are actual misprints, typos in music all the time. Sometimes the first and second bassoon parts, there's a small discrepancy or the way it's written is slightly different, so it's misleading, and so that would make, make the players play it differently. And so as a first bassoonist, it's really your job to, you know, to fix any errors with kindness and tact within your section. And also I think it's important as a first bassoonist, you know, you're, you're leading and, and you're solving problems and making decisions, but just also know that you are human and possibly making mistakes too. So, you know, if something's not lining up in your section, you, you know, it's not always the other people. It might be something in the way that you're playing that's not totally in line with what the music is or what's going on in the ensemble. So just kind of keep that in mind. You know, I think it's sometimes it's easy to 
place blame on others, but you also need to reflect, you know, am I leading clearly? Am I setting a good example as a first player? I've been in sections where I've had a first bassoonist who was really nitpicky about how things should be played and kind of nitpicks every detail. It's not often, but I've, I've had some situations and it, it can be a very, it can make the second player or the rest of the section feel very stressed out when the first player is overly micromanaging and overly nitpicky and, and, and correcting every single little mistake that happens. There's always a fine line sort of between making decisions and fixing problems and setting a good example and being kind of overly nitpicky because you, do, you never want your section to feel like they can't play with you or they're not doing anything right or you know just everything they play is wrong you want you know even if there are a lot of mistakes happening maybe you're playing with someone that you know can be a little bit frustrating to play with it's still really important to maintain like a good working relationship with them and you may not be able to fix every single problem in that section you know especially if you're playing with someone that's a little bit on a, a more lower level than where you're at um, maybe they, they're not, it's just a little bit beyond their ability to be able to play things the way that you're playing them. But it's still your job to figure out the most important issues to fix. What are the things that are really sticking out? Or what are the things that are just really blatantly wrong that need to be fixed? And then maybe some other errors, just let those go. So that's also important as a first bassoonist in your communication to kind of know, you know, which battles to pick. If you're in a really high level professional ensemble, the first bassoonist has every right to, to nitpick everything because that's just the level that you're at and everybody's expected to be at that level and you're getting paid to be there and you, know, you should be performing as close to perfect as possible, especially if you're in the orchestral world. That's kind of you know, where it needs to be. And so the, the levels of how nitpicky a first bassoonist can be is going to depend on what type of ensemble you're in. If you're in a school ensemble, it's different. You know, you might be dealing with really different levels of people in your section. And so you just have to be just mindful of that and pick your battles. One other point to make, of, you know, along the lines of, you know, picking your battles and, and not being too nitpicky if, if it's to the detriment of your section. Um, but you also want to be positive and encouraging. You know, when things do go well, it's always nice to, you know, do a little pat on your leg, you know, to clap for other members of the section, you know, or say, great job, that sounded really great, especially when something is really good. It really helps to be positive and encouraging, especially on like rehearsal breaks, just say, wow, that went really well. Um, because it's it's equally important to give positive feedback as it is negative feedback. So all of the um, things that we think about with being a good leader and setting a good example and leading a team, they all apply to the first bassoon. And they're all really important to, to consider. And I, I will say that, you know, I have played, as someone who has played next to a lot of different first bassoonists, I've had some first bassoonists that I just love playing next to because they are such a great leader and they're so they're so great at their part and, and setting a good example musically, um, but they're also really easy to work with. And that helps me to play better because they're setting such a good example that I can easily match them. I have also played next to some first bassoonists who are very difficult to match. They're very, very difficult to play next to. And there is something to be said about different styles of playing and different types of reads and all that. And you know, certainly there's a wide range of, of types of bassoon sounds. And so it can also be a, a, a thing of where if you're not familiar with how someone plays, it might be difficult to match them because you're on different read styles or have just a different concept of tone. So that, you know, there's that that plays into it as well. But there is something to be said about a first bassoonist who is, you know, adjusting on the fly and realizing that our section is not matching very well. What can I do to lead better to help them match me? So I've played with both, diff both, both types of first bassoonists as a second bassoon player. And I 
And it really makes a difference when the first bassoonist is leading and problem solving and communicating well and just setting a really good example for the section. Just makes it so much easier as a section member to have a really good first bassoonist leader. So let's talk about second bassoon. Second bassoon is easier, right? Because you don't ever have the solos, the music isn't as high. Wrong. Second bassoon can be so difficult. In my opinion, second bassoon and third bassoon, fourth bassoon, counter bassoon can often be more difficult than the first bassoon part because you have to match the first bassoonist. And a lot of times, especially in softer passages, the, the first bassoonist will have a note that's higher than you and you'll have a lower note and it might be in your lower octave and you have to play so soft and it's easier for them to play soft if they're playing, say, a C in the staff and you're playing the C below the staff, an octave below, it's going to be exponentially easier for them to play that at a barely audible dynamic than for you. And so second bassoonists have to work a lot harder to match first bassoonists because they just have to match what is being given to them, whether they like it or not. Um, and I think that's that's where you know some people are like, oh, second bassoon is so you know it's not as difficult as first bassoon. And in a lot of ways, I think second bassoon is equally difficult, if not more, in certain ways because it's just you don't you have to match what is given to you and you have to make the other person sound good you have to have even more control over your instrument especially when it comes to dynamics and pitch because you just have to be rock solid for your first bassoonist and, and the rest of the wind section to match you now at the beginning of this video i mentioned that the second bassoonist has one of the most important jobs in the entire wind section and that job is to set a good foundation for pitch the second bassoonist or whoever's the lowest bassoonist sometimes there's a third bassoon or sometimes there's even a contra bassoon that person is setting the pitch foundation for the entire wind section so anytime the winds are playing something together usually it's that lower bassoon that is playing the lowest note, usually the root or at least the lowest pitch of a given part. You have to have rock solid pitch. It, it can't waver. You have to be on green, meaning that you have to be in tune with the tuner and you really have to know the tendencies of your instrument. And it can be so hard on bassoon because our low register tends to run sharp. And so if you're not on a great read, it can be really hard to make that low register speak, first of all, and be in tune, second of all, but equally important. And that can be a really difficult job, um, and you can easily make other members of the wind section very upset if you are not setting the pitch correctly. And the reason it can be really problematic if a second bassoonist is not doing this job very well is because usually when you get into the, the higher octave woodwinds, so say the flutes, in order for their octaves and, and intervals to sound in tune to the root, which may be several octaves below what they're playing, they actually have to play a little bit sharp in order in, in just intonation to make that interval sound good. So already when when bassoon is playing the note on green in tune, the upper woodwinds, especially if they're several octaves above, they already have to lean a little bit sharp. But if you're playing sharp in that low register as a second bassoonist, and they have to push even sharper than what they were already starting out with if it was on green, they're going to be very upset with you. I've talked to, to many flute players who who will get upset with you know the second bassoonist or low bassoons because they're not you know setting the pitch low enough. More often than not, we're sharp than flat. So if you're ever in doubt, you're probably a little bit sharp, and that makes it so much more difficult for the higher woodwinds and the higher other playing instruments. And you are setting the pitch for the woodwind section, but you also have to match pitch with the other low members of the ensemble. So as a second bassoonist or third bassoonist. You need to be matching the tuba player or the trombones. You need, to, if you're playing in a band, you need to be matching the maybe the berry tenor sax or and also the low brass. You need to be checking in if you're in an orchestra, checking in with the cellos or the basses, 
because they're going to be playing similar parts to you. And so, you know, you not only have to be a solid foundation for the woodwind section, but you also need to kind of connect with the other low members of the ensemble to make sure that you're all playing the same route. And it, that can be so hard when you're split across the ensemble to hear, you know, are we really playing the same pitch? Is this really, or are we, you know, maybe 10 cents off from each other, five cents off from each other? It can be really hard. It takes a lot of experience and a lot of practice to get really tuned into being in tune with other ensemble members and being, you know, just really rock solid yourself. And as a second bassoonist, you, your reads have to be really responsive because you're often playing softer and supporting the first bassoonist and you're often playing lower, which can make response very difficult. And you also need your, your pitch to be on the lower side because we often tend to play sharper in our lower register. So your reads need to be good, but you also need to match the first bassoonist in general. So really listen carefully to how long their notes are. Make sure that you're playing exactly what they're playing, that you there is nothing different between how the first bassoonist is playing something and you're playing something. When I'm playing second bassoon, I like to imagine that I am playing the first bassoonist's bassoon. It's, it's sort of an abstract concept. It's, it's more just to get myself to match them completely, especially if I'm having trouble matching them. Maybe they just kind of have a different sense of tone than I do, or, you know, I'm just not used to where their pitch is lining up. And, and by the way, you as a second bassoonist, you're setting the pitch, but when it comes to maybe the bassoons have a line together, the first bassoonist, yes, they're referencing you, but ultimately if they're placing a pitch in a certain place and it's very clear where they're placing that pitch, maybe it's a little sharper, a little flatter than what you think it should be, you go with them, especially when you have like a unison thing. So yes, you are sort of deciding the pitch, but when in doubt, go with the first bassoonist, especially if they're playing something different than you. So it can be hard to match certain bassoonists, especially if you're not used to playing with them. There's many times where I've stepped into an orchestra and I've never played with the bassoonist before and I just have to figure it out, even though they may be playing on a totally different setup than I do, that maybe they play a different instrument make than I do or a different read style. I just, I, you have to make it work. I have to make it work. So I pretend that I am playing that person's instrument. I really I try to like get myself in the mindset of like, if I was this person, like how would I be playing my instrument? Like I really try to assimilate myself to what they are doing so that I can try as much as possible to play the same thing. So as a second bassoonist, you need to match the first bassoonist as much as possible in whatever way possible. That is the bottom line that you are a supportive role and you are letting the first bassoonist do their job and lead. That is also true with the communication as well. So if you ever have a question about what you're playing, you should direct it to your first bassoonist first before going to another ensemble member, before going straight to the conductor, because your first bassoonist might have an opinion or an answer to your question on how something should be played. And if the conductor needs to be involved in the decision, they should be the ones usually to go to the conductor. And again, that goes back to rehearsal being efficient and everybody having sort of a job and a, a hierarchy of communication. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that you can never talk to the, to the conductor or never talk to other section members or ensemble members. As I mentioned before, this is definitely what you want to do, default to if you're in a higher level group, say you're in a professional orchestra or you're in a, a very advanced group or the conductor who is leading the group might be more formal and might prefer that style of communication where only the principal players are kind of communicating to the conductor. That would be the default way of communicating. But you very well may be in an ensemble where the conductor is a little bit more informal or relaxed about that sort of thing and they don't really mind if, you know, whoever asks them a question in the middle of rehearsal or um, there's not, you know, a clear designation of 
who's you know the section leader. I know in a lot of ensembles, especially if you're playing in a school ensemble or a community ensemble, you might be rotating parts between first and second bassoon. And so you know maybe someone who normally plays second bassoon is playing first and you know they're not comfortable with you know leading or or or, or doing that or initiating that conversation. Uh, it's usually okay in those situations for kind of anybody to step in and, and figure out the problem. Obviously, you don't want a, an unanswered question to be hanging about. You know, it's more important that the question or problem gets fixed so that the section can sound good. So you kind of have to read the environment if you're stepping into a new ensemble that you're not familiar with. I would always just default to those sort of etiquette guidelines when it comes to communication and then as you get more comfortable with the conductor and the group then you can figure out what is the sort of general hierarchy of communication if there is one but what i mentioned today in terms of you know who's in charge and who's making the decisions that's a very kind of traditional formal way of approaching communication within the ensemble um, and any time that there's a question or there's a disagreement about how something should be made, this is kind of a nice way to fall back on who makes the final decision. If it's something that has to do with just the bassoon section, it's the first bassoonist decision. And so a lot of times when I'm playing second bassoon, um, there might be a, a couple different options of how to play a particular passage, and I'm not sure which one they want. And I might ask the first bassoonist at a rehearsal break and say, hey, do you want me to do this or do you want me to do this in this section? What seems better? And sometimes they, they're like, whatever is, works for you is fine. And that then I can just make that decision. But I always default to the first bassoonist is making the decision. So that is kind of an overview of the different roles of the first bassoonist and the second bassoonist in any type of ensemble. Again, this is kind of universal, no matter what type of ensemble you're playing in. A lot of what I said today applies to what role that you're playing. And so I hope that you learned something. And if you have any questions about the roles of first or second bassoonists, be sure to ask them down below. If this video was helpful for you, make sure you give me a thumbs up. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel. And I'm so glad that you're here. We'll see you next time.